I describe Fire Island as an oasis of free love. You know, these days, it's sort of safe to be gay, and so it's easy to forget that only a few decades ago, this was the only place where you could feel unselfconsciously yourself. And it led to an incredible kind of flowering of artistic culture out here. My name is Christopher Rollins, and the name of my book is called Fire Island Modernist, Horace Gifford and the Architecture of Seduction. Horace Gifford was this charismatic, eccentric figure who designed bachelor pads during a very heady period of American history for a very kind of colorful clientele. They were quite naughty <laughs> as time goes by with, you know, outdoor showers and mirrored ceilings and conversation pits. And then he even invented names that are not seen in many other uh, blueprints like the makeout loft and the cave. And one can only imagine if those walls could talk. And those walls were often done up in sheepskin or uh, shag carpet. <laughs> house is just hovering. It looks like it floats in the trees. Life in a Gifford home is an artful form of camping. The houses are small, usually about 100 square meters, but they tend to feel much larger because they have high ceilings and sun decks that extend out into an untouched landscape. Uh, Gifford was uh, a person who loathed clipped lawns, fences, uh, painted surfaces. The materials are generally a naturally weathering cedar and glass inside and out. And that comes about from this notion that life at the beach should be carefree as well as maintenance free. And they also possess a kind of communitarian flavor. And by that I mean they have very grand public spaces surrounded by tiny little bedrooms because he wanted people to be out here to socialize. He didn't want people being isolated. After all, this was about a group of like-minded people finding community. And his homes really express that fact. I was amazed at the sort of uncanny way in which his work attracts the arc of gay liberation. Like early 60s pavilions that provided refuge from a hostile world. And as you get, go through the 60s and into the Stonewall period, the houses become literally open and voyeuristic, full glass facades facing the ocean. And they were about this kind of interplay of public and private and questioning the sort of nuclear family having their backyard barbecue. Instead, he opens the front of the house for all to see. His career was essentially over by the early 80s. And during that decade, he became ill with AIDS and he died in 1992 at the age of 59. Rediscovering these houses, for me, was a kind of portal to a lost world. You know, AIDS ravaged this predominantly gay community, and it created a sort of dark ages in which a lot of history was lost. And so I set out to sort of recapture at least a little slice of that history.